Your Honour, if it pleases the court, my name is Nan, initial JN. I appear on behalf of the defendant, Sonny Barger. My client has been charged with assaulting a police officer pursuant to section 341B of the criminal code and one count of possessing a thing used to play an unlawful game with for the purposes of section 233 of the criminal code. Your Honour, I submit that evidence lacks relevance and for this reason should not be submitted. The Constable Tamson also deliberately, and from now on will be referred to as the Constable, deliberately breached the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act, herein referred to as the PPRA, um, by unlawfully obtaining evidence, and this evidence for that reason should also not be submitted. Your Honour, evidence is relevant if it could rationally affect, directly or indirectly, the assessment of the probability of a fact and issue. This is according to Goldsmiths and Sandylands. It is clear that the possession of the game of two-up by Sunny is not relevant to the possession of gaming equipment for the purposes of section 233. The elements of this offence are set out as follows. The offender must be a person, must be in possession of gaming equipment, this equipment must have been used or be intended to be used to play an unlawful game, gaming equipment in the same section of the code refers to anything used or suitable to be used for playing an unlawful game, Unlawful game, according to chapter 230a, refers to a game of chance or mixed chance that is played by more, more than one person and on which the outcome is gambled upon. And this must be conducted in a public place or in a private place that requires consideration to be able to play the game or a percentage of the amount gambled to be kept by one of the players, another person, or that percentage not to be included in the total winnings. It is contentious as to whether Two-up is an unlawful game for the purposes of the criminal code. The exact nature of how this game is suitable for playing an unlawful game is uncertain on the facts provided. Further evidence may be needed to satisfy a section 233 offence as the elements of unlawful offence are so very, very specific. It is evident though that Two-up is an iconic Australian game that can be bought at various gift shops um, and has sentimental and historical values and purposes that are related to culture other, rather than gambling. For this reason, I don't believe that this is relevant to the uh, offence. With respect to the assault charge, the backpack and its contents are very clearly not relevant to the offence. Section 341b of the Criminal Code involves elements of assaulting a police officer whilst they are acting in the execution of their duty. It is provided that the backpack has been confiscated prior to the struggle between the constable and my client. It's clear from this that the backpack itself had no involvement with the alleged assault. Therefore, it cannot be submitted as evidence for this charge either. I now come to my second submission, Your Honour, if it pleases the court, the defence seek to admit the public policy exclusionary discretion, as specified in R in Ireland, convictions obtained uh, with the aid of unlawful evidence may be obtained at too high a cost. The defence maintains that the contents of the backpack have been obtained unlawfully. Now, Bunnings and Cross sets out five non-exhaustive factors which inform a decision to exercise this discretion. The first factor involves asking the question whether the conduct has resulted from a genuine mistake or deliberate breach of the law. According to the PPRA, Section 322A, a police officer may search a vehicle without warrant where the driver or a passenger in the vehicle is committing an offence against 10C of the Summary Offences Act. The Summary Offences Act provides that a person must not, in a vehicle, where a prohibited item, a prohibited item, according to the Liquor Act, Section 173 EA, involves any item with an image, symbol, abbreviation, acronym, or other form of writing that indicates membership of or association with an identified organization, including the symbol 1%. Now, I don't dispute that the jacket had sewn on it a badge and that on that badge was the symbol 1%. However, Buzzcocks does not indicate membership with an identified organization. The defense maintained that Buzzcocks does not read buzzards, although such confusion may be understandable if my client did not point this out to the constable. The defense also submits that the word Buzzcocks by itself is not a symbol, abbreviation, acronym, or other form of writing that indicates membership with an identified organization, such as the buzzards. It is provided that my client was well known as a member of the buzzards. However, this is not a relevant element of any of the aforementioned legislation. It is for this reason that the conduct resulted from a deliberate breach of the law. Further, 
The fact that the constable was informed as to the writing on the badge is also another indicator that this was a deliberate breach of the law rather than something that happened out of a mistake. The defense will now continue looking at some of the other factors of Bunnings and Cross. Provided that the evidence was not gathered due to a genuine mistake, it can only be considered unless vital to the Crown case and of a perishable nature. It seems unlikely that my client intended to destroy this evidence permanently, as it involved a game, and games usually are used more than once or twice and kept in possession for that reason. Further, it's important to ask whether the conduct was a genuine response to a pressing case or whether the police could have easily applied the law. Now, in this case, it wouldn't have been difficult for the police to obtain a search warrant before searching the car. As this is not a serious offence, I believe evidence should be excluded. The PPRA's purpose in Section 5 is specifically to rationalise the powers of the police. By breaching the PPRA, the constable clearly breached the purpose of the Act. For these reasons, the judge should exercise their discretion not to admit the backpack as evidence. In summary, Your Honour, I submit that the evidence lack, lacks relevance and should not be admitted for this reason. Further, I submit that to admit the evidence regarding the backpack is disregard of the laws to protect the public at large and would go against public policy. I also believe that this would go, uh, go out to set an objectionable precedent. Thank you very much, Your Honour.